Hello everyone, I'm RecV5. And I'm Sandman99. And welcome to the top five unwritten rules of Madden NFL 2005. Starting up with rule number one. Punt returners cannot field punts on the fly. That's right. Now, just as an aside, these top five rules are unwritten, but they are the rules that must be complied with, because if you go against them, you will regret it. That's right. So anyway, just a little explanation here. Uh, what we're watching is we're watching the Seattle Pigeons punt to the Minnesota Nords. And I'm controlling the Nords right now. And uh, basically what happens is here comes the punt and you can see the punt returner running across the field because the punter angled the ball away from him. And you'll watch and see that he uh, mishandles that ball. Like, look at him. It ball, basically, it just bounces off of him, and now it's a loose ball running around. Yeah, this would count as a fumble right now. Oh, yeah, for sure. Luckily, I was able to get control of him and pick the ball up and run it. And as you can see, I'm actually getting a fairly decent return out of this. Ran through a tackle. But at the end of this play, on the upshot of it, I also got a holding penalty. So, the, so after all of this excitement, the ball came back anyway. <laughs> Yeah, well, in but, a lot of normal circumstances, too, this number 54 would be the guy who picked it up because uh, number 85 here would reach down and he'd, like, kick the ball and then it would go and bounce a few steps and then number 54 would come and run it back the other way for a touchdown. Yeah, but anyway, if you back up the, the uh, video here just a little bit from this perspective now, right, you'll notice if you back up far enough, the punt returner has to run approximately half the width of the field sideways in order to get to this ball. That's right. Okay, and what we have found through years of experience playing this game is that you let this punt drop, bounce on the ground and let it roll to a stop. If you try to field it, very often this will happen because your punt returner, even if he is a good receiver... And like, even if he's got 99 kick return attribute... Yeah, he will, more often than not, like seemingly about 50-50 chance, it's about a coin flip, whether he is able to successfully field this punt or not, right? And in this case, not. But, uh, you know, it's tempting to try and, and field these punts and go against this unwritten rule, but usually bad things happen when you try to do it. <laughs> bad things and, happen and you when you what? break unwritten rules. If you if you look down the field from the perspective of the punter when he is about to field this, well, boy, it looks like it's set up really well for a big return, right? Like there's a huge alley along the right sideline there. Yep. Uh, to run down, you know, like just on the outside of the numbers here because the whole return team is in the middle of the field. But because you can't actually catch this ball, well... You know, like it's still, even though I, I uh, had a trouble recovering it, I still got a good return. But, you know, like you, you just, you don't, you don't feel those. You run away in the opposite direction, away from the ball and let it bounce on the ground. Because otherwise, something like this will probably happen. And this, more often than not, it will never work out in your favor. That's right. I was lucky this time. I managed to recover it myself. But usually the coverage team will get down there and they'll pick that ball up. So there you go. That is written, unwritten rule number one. Punt returners cannot field punts on the fly. They have to stand still, square themselves up to the ball, and catch it. Unwritten rule number two. Punt returners must be able to run forward a minimum of three steps before contact, or else they will fumble. That's, that's right, folks. Here we see a well-executed re re receiving of a punt where the returner is actually able to stop, square himself up to the ball, and field it cleanly, all right? But he does not have enough room to take three running steps forward before the coverage guy hits him, okay? You see how he's positioned there? He's going to field this punt cleanly. There he is. The, re the coverage guy even gives him a chance to field it. And, and he then, even tucks it in. He even tucks it away like a ball carrier. And then here comes the coverage guy. And the coverage guy hits him and the ball comes out. 
instantly. And, and this will happen almost 100% of the time, unless you have enough room to run forward three steps. It has to be a full three steps. If it is only two steps, the same thing will happen. The ball will come out. And if it's only one step, the same thing will happen. Yep, exactly. The minimum is three running steps. The, the, your punt returner must field the punt cleanly and then run upfield three full strides before being hit by a coverage guy. Because if, if he is hit sooner than that, the ball will always come out. And these guys here, they're not even like a particularly good team. They're no. the looters, the Minnesota or Minneapolis uh, looters. Or no, Minnesota looters, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and they're a cupcake team. They have like, their best players are like 70 rated. This guy's probably like something like 60 overall. He's got probably got like 49 tackling. It doesn't matter uh, how bad the player is and how good this player is. Right, because this guy is actually a guy we drafted. This is season number four. The Crusaders in this franchise are three-time Super Bowl champions back-to-back. -back. This man is a professional 99-rated kick returner with a huge catching rating, and it doesn't matter. The moment he gets hit here, he's still going to fumble 100% of the time. Yep. In fact, when I've returned punts, if I have not been able to run that mandatory three steps straight ahead upfield before being hit, I don't remember a time when I did not fumble the ball. Yeah, the only reason we actually got this on tape is because we deliberately recorded this and allowed it to be fumbled. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we basically allowed this to happen for the purpose of illustrating what happens. That's right. And really what happens too, because of this, is... Uh, I have never in, you know, ever since this game first came out, I have never returned a punt for a touchdown, ever. Even in the last play where it looked like you possibly could have with yeah. all that uh, extra room on that right-hand yes. lane. But there is a reason for that, and that is because I always call a fair catch. Yep. Okay, if the ball is coming down in this kind of situation where my returner and actually stop and square himself up and catch the ball without any difficulty, I'll call a fair catch to it avoid a fumble. And if I'm not sure that I can get at least three running steps before I get tackled. In cases like the previous video segment, where my returner has to field the punt on the fly, I won't even try to field it. I'll just run away from the ball and let it land on the ground. Yep, yep. And that's because in Madden 05, basically they have taken the punt return game completely out of the game. Okay? It's they, they out of might the as, game. They, yes, that's right. It's not in the game. It's out of the game. <laughs> in fact, they may as well have put a play in special teams called Fair Catch. Because then that way you could just put, uh, call that play on a punt return situation and your punt returner would go back there and just automatically call a fair catch. You wouldn't have to even control him because we call fair catch so often on punts in this game to avoid fumbles like this that we, we can play entire games or even two or three games in a row without even returning a single punt. Yeah, the irony is you actually get better punt blocking uh, or p better punt protection and better punt return opportunities if instead of calling a normal punt return like this, which is what this is with those guys running back to block, you just call a punt block. That's right. You'll punt, get better punt, blocking. Yeah, punt block man actually gives you enough blocking that sometimes you can field a punt and then run at least three, maybe four strides upfield before you encounter your first coverage guy. Unwritten rule number three. Running is not allowed in Madden NFL 2005. That's right. Because one of the reasons for it is that offensive linemen will always prefer to block safeties over defensive linemen or linebackers. And additionally, since the AI almost always crowds 10 guys in the box, this means that running is not allowed. That's right. Now, in this case, they didn't crowd 10 guys in the block, box, but let's watch what happens when we run this play. First of all, you can look at it. It's the, the out-of-the-box single back normal, and the play call is actually the out-of-the-box halfback dive, which means that it's a back step and then a run right up the middle, right over top of where the right guard is there. Yep. And you can see that the defense is in a 3-3 nickel, 
There's okay. a bit of space between the right guard and that linebacker there, so you should be able to get at least a couple yards on this. That's right. And it looks like, uh, you know, you've got enough guys there that you've got a right tackle who can block the end. You've got a tight end who could possibly block that outside linebacker, depending on which way that linebacker goes. And your right guard should pick up one of those two linebackers, okay? But uh, if we run this play, let's see what happens. Okay, so the outside linebacker made an inside move there. Right? Yep. But you might have still been able to recover from this, except for the fact that number 76 there does not actually block either of those two guys. Yeah, it looks like he gets low, but he actually doesn't engage either of them. It's not yeah. even like a clip block. That's, that's actually incidental contact. Because he, if you continue to watch number 76, he's not actually trying to block anybody at the line of scrimmage. He's targeting number 33 there, the strong safety. Okay, and you look at it, and he just makes a beeline for that guy, right? He wants to go and block that safety, and that was right from before the ball was even snapped. That was his plan, right? Yeah, he's looking right at him the entire time. Yeah, and, uh, you know, like if you back up again and look from behind the line of scrimmage, I mean, that is a big contributing factor to the failure of this play. I mean, the fact that the outside linebacker there kind of closed off the gap, yeah, I can see that, right? Yeah, he did a good job there. You might have had to cut this outside or do something to try to get salvage yeah, this. But, but but if the guard had made an effort to block him because he was the closer of the two, so all that guard had to do, if you go back to the beginning of the play here, is turn slightly to his right and block that outside linebacker, and then I would have been able to cut to the right and go outside. But I wasn't even able to cut because that linebacker burst through the gap so quickly that he hit me before I could even turn, right? Yep. And so, interesting thing here, look at the size of the gap between the offensive linemen there. I wonder yeah. if that's a cue. But you see how the outside linebacker is lined up much closer to the line of scrimmage than the middle linebacker, right? Yep. Which would mean that your right guard there if he doesn't have any responsibility for anybody immediately in front of him, which is probably the case in a three-man line like this, um, he should pick the guy who, the next greatest threat. From the next level of defenders. From the next level of defenders. And, and that's that going to be the linebacker. That means number 57 should be his man if that number 57 tries to move inside. Right? And he, and, he and does. Yes, and yes, the middle linebacker is also a threat to this play, but not so much that I couldn't have maybe evaded him by cutting to the outside because well, because he starts further away anyway. Even but, if we zoom in here, he's already not looking at number 57 here. That's right. right? He's, he's already, already looking past He's him. already looking downfield at the safety. Because you can see by the head tracking, right? He's yep. already looking downfield yeah, he, right look at, at that and guy. And look at who he's looking right at, yeah. And he runs right by and he completely ignores that outside linebacker and instead he's going after that safety. And that, that to me, my mind, is a huge flaw in the game, but it is one of the unwritten top five rules of Madden, which is why I don't use vanilla running plays very much. Because, because this they, always happens. This kind of thing always happens. That's why people who have been watching our series may have noticed that I run three running back sets a lot, right? I run the wishbone or the triple I, or occasionally a full house. Even when you play offense, Rec V5X, you run a lot of three running back sets. Yes, I do. And that's because when this idiot decides that he has to run downfield and block a safety... This three Super Bowl uh, champion idiot, yeah. this man has three rings and he's still doing this. Yeah, and then at least you have a fullback behind this guy who will pick up one of those two linebackers. That's right. <laughs> and if necessary, if you're, if like for me, if I'm running out of the eye, I've got yet an, another additional blocker in front of me as well. And that's why I run heavy sets all the time when I plan to run, because it's you can't, the only way to run. You can't, unless you run to the outside, like um, a stretch play or something like that. Which requires a very, very fast running back. Yeah, you can't really run out of a single back formation against anything. Not even against this 3 3 nickel, which you would think by looking at it should be kind of weak against the run. Especially for a dive up the middle. 
yeah especially for a dive up the middle where you should be able to run between the nose tackle and the end and at least pick up a couple of yards before a linebacker fills in unwritten rule number four play action passes will work well for the ai but they will almost never work properly for the player that's right uh, what usually happens when you, when you as the player try to run play action is the blocking breaks down almost immediately. So here we have a single back tight formation. And I've called a play action pass out of this. And we're up against the good old looters again. A and they're terrible. A cupcake team. I mean, it's season four. They've improved a bit, but they're still one of the weakest teams in the league. And we're three-time Super Bowl champions. That's right. So if you look at the right side of the offense particularly um you know you can see that we have uh coleman there who is a experienced wide receiver and we have tyson who is also a second or third year receiver yep so they're both pretty good players and they're both fairly fast tyson is blazing fast right he's got like 94 speed or something like that and coleman he's got average speed but he's still you know, like a 80 plus speed receiver. And additionally, our linemen have all been on the team for at least three years. All right. They're all uh, superstar caliber players by this point, all like high 90s rated with like 99 and everything in terms of blocking. Right. But even that is not going to matter for the result of this play. That's right. So, so if we run this play. We start off and we have the play fake, and you can see they're blitzing from the outside, right? But the play fake doesn't look bad. You know, we've had a lot of success running in this game all game long. It's looters. They're not going to stop us from running. Yeah, we we actually <laughs> ran for 170 yards in this game, okay? <laughs> but that does not matter, because this cupcake linebacker, who has never done anything meaningful in his life, he instantly knows that it's not a play fake, and boom. That's right. And, and not I've... only that, but if we take a look here too at this blocking, like, look at this. It's just falling to pieces almost immediately. Yeah. If that guy doesn't get me, then the guy coming from the backside will. That's right. Because, uh, you know, like, like I said, and if you look downfield, well, the guy running the corner route on the right... Well, he's got 94 speed, and he hasn't even had time to uh, fully develop his route. And you see the other guy, Coleman, running in the flat there, and he's got his hand up waving, but I don't have time to throw the ball to him because I'm already being hit. Yep. And if you look short to the left here at the outside receiver, he gives that, that other blitzing linebacker a bit of a bump there, number 80. But he is the outlet guy. He's running a four-yard curl. And the only guy covering him is the referee. Right? <laughs> like, I, I literally had two wide-open short receivers that I could have thrown to if I could have actually completed the throwing motion. And the way that I execute uh, play-action passes is I don't wait around either. Like, I decide who I'm going to throw the ball to before I even start the play and then it's kind of like a timed pass. So the only thing stopping me from throwing that ball even sooner is I have to wait for the play action um, and fake, animation. fake animation to finish playing before I can actually regain control of my quarterback to throw the ball. That's right. And in this case, I was trying to throw the ball to the number 80 there, right? Because I saw immediately that there was a, a blitzer coming from that side and that he was going to be wide open. But it on, just doesn't on a, matter. On a four-yard curl, I mean, how long does it take to run a four-yard curl, right? So that guy coming from a mile away on the other side of the formation actually got to me faster than I could regain control of my quarterback and throw the ball on a four-yard curl, right? So that's what we mean by play action very rarely works for uh, the, the player. And I just want to highlight something else, right? So we're going to go to another clip here because there's something real specific I want to highlight to even when play action works. So we'll be right back. And we're back. And I just wanted to show this off because 
even when a play action pass works, it doesn't work right. So we're lined up here in Sandman 99's triple I formation again, and we're about to do another play action pass because again, we, we ran for 170 yards this game. We ran over these guys all game long, but it simply doesn't matter, right? Because we have the fake uh, handoff to the running back here. And we've already got people shooting through the line. We've already got another guy who's practically unblocked by three different linemen, right? And he doesn't even hit the running back somehow. If I was playing this particular player's position, I would have got sucked into an animation that would have forced me to tackle that guy, no matter how much I tried to angle away from him, right? But it simply doesn't matter. And then Sandman99 manages to get this ball off just barely in time as he's getting hit. Right? Like, it's such an iffy thing that this pass is even going to be completed, but thankfully it comes out as a clean throw, and uh, I think it's Rhodes here, or no, it's Mills here, who manages to get out into the formation and actually catch this, and this actually turns out to be a pretty good play, right? Because, you know, with the play action, at least he's got to step on that guy, he kind of misses him, the safety has to make the tackle after. But, uh, you know, even when... Uh, Play action does work, and you see how fast uh, Sandman99 gets rid of the ball on this, right? It's basically like instant throw, and it just doesn't matter. Yeah, basically I threw this as a time pass. When I looked at the defense, and I saw that they were in a man lock kind of situation where you've got... The corners um, pulled in. The corners pulled in to cover the tight end on the right and the wide receiver on the left. And then because of the, well, this is the look that you get often when you run the triple I, where you have a large number of players clustered in the middle of the field. So three of those linebackers actually have man coverage assignments on the three running backs, right? That's right, yep. And one of those guys has a blitz assignment by the looks of it. And this is a 3-3 nickel again, and what I noticed is that this particular game, the, the uh, looters here tended to use a blitz play with the 3-3 nickel where they would send the uh, middle linebacker on a blitz quite often. Yep. You know, and turn it into a four-man rush, essentially. So if we move ahead here slowly, though, you got to look at, um, first of all, here comes the linebacker in the middle that uh, Rec V5X was talking about. But where does that guy who comes free from the right come from? Well, look at that. He's the guy who was on the center, right? And he basically, like, the, the blocking broke down so quickly that the nose tackle actually managed to slide around the center and evade the uh, other rest of the offensive line, right? Yep. And then what is going on here on the blocking here, too, right? Because you've got a guard who's pulling over to the left here. That's not his assignment. Yeah. You've got number 68, who I don't think actually blocks anybody. He just kind of runs around in circles. Yeah, I don't know why that guard moved over, because that guard, uh, you know, as far as I could tell, uh, like, as I built this play out of another play action pass, of course, because you don't have the ability to um, d design play fakes yourself in this game. But he's just supposed but, to be running straight ahead. But he's ahead. supposed to be just blocking straight ahead, right? And so I don't know why he's pulling. It's almost like he thinks that we're running a sweep or something here, right? And that's not the case either, because this is a fake dive. Yeah. All right, so we just run this at full speed, and you can see the hilarity ensue in the line there. And yeah, okay, the pass gets off, but... The only, even... reason, the only reason that pass got away at all is because I'd already committed to throwing to that particular receiver before the play started, and... I was just madly tapping the button to throw to that receiver as quickly as I could because I wanted to be able to get rid of the ball immediately as soon as the uh, game gave me control of the quarterback back. Yeah, and it's 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 literally just like a single frame later that you actually get hit. That ball doesn't even look like it actually leaves his hand right. But uh, apparently the game decided he threw that one as a perfect spiral, so he did. Yeah. <laughs> So, anyway, uh, play action, in some cases, I've, been, I've actually been working on trying to design play action passes that would actually work. Yeah, you work quite hard at it, too. Because most, I found that most of the out-of-the-box play action passes don't work. 
you cannot actually keep your quarterback on his feet long enough to get rid of them. And even the, the pattern that the wide receiver runs here is a very quick pattern, right? Like you see him there, he runs straight ahead about, oh, five or six yards and then breaks at a 45 degree uh, angle toward the sideline. Yeah, it's the most basic of basic corner routes. Yeah, it's routes. the basic, basic corner route, right? <laughs> and uh, it's a very quick one to uh, run. That's a very quick route. Yeah, it actually almost looks like this ends up getting underthrown, probably because you were getting contacted. Yeah, well, also he had to, to adjust to the ball a little bit too, because really this ball should have been led to him so he would have caught it at almost the 50-yard line if it had been thrown properly, right? Yeah, but w under these conditions, how can you really expect much more than this? Yeah. So even when that play action works, I've found that it, it's it's a near disaster. Yeah, it doesn't right? work right. <laughs> That's about, I guess that's about all we have to say about that, except that I will add in that this is not the case when the AI runs play action. Yeah, when the AI runs play action, it works every single time, no yes. matter what. And for some reason, their pass protection is pretty good too. And last on the list, unwritten rule number five. Defenders on the player's team will suddenly misplay their assignments for no apparent reason, even if their coverage assignments are perfectly well supported by the other players around them. So, we're in a goal line red zone defense situation here. I'm playing defense with the Crusaders here. And it's a typical uh, nickel cover three type of setup. Nothing too special to uh, describe here. Except, if we take a look at the way that this develops, quarterback drops back to pass. And you should think that uh, the back in the deep, in the end zone uh, out deep there that it should be perfectly well covered since it's a cover three. But look at this. There's a receiver all alone back there. All right? And the only reason that this doesn't become a touchdown is because we have a guy here who is converted from safety, so he has a crazy jumping ability, playing our dime back here, and he swats that pass down while he's playing his short zone, right? But what went wrong here, right? What went wrong is that this guy is coming back in his deep zone. And, yeah, okay, he's got to follow this guy a little bit so that he can trade off his zone coverage to someone else. But if you take a look here, as I said, it's a cover three. You have a linebacker here, and if you're... In a situation where you have to throw a pass that looks like this, right? If we take a look at that from the quarterback's perspective, that's probably an interception, right? You wouldn't want to throw that in there. So there's really no reason for that uh, cornerback on the outside to keep following this guy beyond this point. He can trade it off to that linebacker. And then there's another safety in the middle here who will pick up the trade after that if the play goes on long enough, and so on and so forth. This is how you would expect this sort of thing to go down. I mean, I guess if the guy crossed the field entirely, there's another cornerback over here alongside this triple-covered guy, which they're obviously not going to throw the ball to. But uh, instead, he follows this guy to the very edge of his zone, right where his zone is supposed to stop. And the guy who's supposed to be covering this, who has nobody in his zone right now, so, you know, why is he so passive, right? He should be watching the play and reacting. Doesn't react until this guy enters the very bottom of his zone. So if you could fit a ball in there, if there weren't those two short zone defenders in there at all, this guy would be totally wide open with the amount of space between him and this safety here, right? And again... Like, this should have never happened. This guy should have moved back over and provided support for this dime back here. And the only reason this works out as well as it does and saves the touchdown is, again, because this dime back, although he's not necessarily the best rated guy because he's a safety, he's an amazing player. He's got great awareness. He's got great jumping ability. And he's also a little bit bigger than a corner, too. Maybe that also helps with the jump height. <laughs> But, uh, you know, it's only because of an amazing highlight reel pl uh, play that this doesn't turn into a touchdown for the other team. Yeah, and that's a uh, huge flaw. And that's how, uh, you know, sometimes you wonder when you play a cover three defense in this situation like this, and they throw a touchdown to a guy who's alone in the end zone in the corner. And it's like, well, how did that guy get it be so alone? I had a three across zone that back there. Well, now you know why. It's because 
they for some reason are built in such a way that even though that guy was basically running a short to medium crossing route well that deep zone guy abandoned his post basically to continue following a receiver that he no longer needed to cover yeah and even uh then right like it's a short to medium crossing route right like yeah. this hook zone guy can still perfectly easily cover it yeah. this hook zone guy can probably even move over and help out well that would be a very dangerous pass to throw like you know what coming from a guy who runs a passing style offense like me okay if you look at this again from the quarterback's perspective I'm not going to throw the ball to that guy running the crossing route behind those two short defenders because that is an extremely dangerous throw to make, right? And the only, you know, I would, however, I would definitely throw to that guy underneath there running into the corner of the end zone because, you know, that's not a very chancy throw at all. Yeah, it's ridiculous how wide open he you know, came. He should like have I never said, come that was, open. That was just sheer luck that, that uh, you, your defender managed to jump up and knock that down. He just happened to be exactly in the right place at the right time. Yeah, a real highlight, real play, just to stop a, a horrible, horrible mistake. Yeah, because, and you know what? In a three o'clock across zone like that, where they've divided the field into thirds, uh, there's no way that that defender should have to run all the way to hit the edge of his zone. By the time he gets to about where the S is in, in the Crusader's name in the end zone there, he should already know that he no longer needs to chase that guy, right? Yeah. Because that guy is obviously going to leave his zone before the pass is thrown. Exactly. And if he stays about where the S is there, then at least he's in a good position to recover and move and try and... Uh, defend the pass against the other guy that runs into his zone afterwards. Yeah, at least it wouldn't be a freebie. It would at, at the yeah. very least be a contested catch. I mean, you know what? You you talk about flooding zones on offense and all that kind of stuff, but this is an extremely exaggerated example of it. And if you're actually watching a game at home on TV with actual players, you're, you're never, not going to see a defender do this. You're never going to see that happen, okay? <laughs> if If a cornerback was ever that dumb... The, be cut. The, the defensive coordinator would place his butt on the bench and someone else would be playing his position, right? Like you, you would never, ever see a play like that happen in real life. I don't think because he's so far off, like he's so far out of position that it's absolutely ridiculous, but playing within the five rules of Madden, that's why in my most recent defensive playbook, I have developed a system where I play nothing but four deep zone all the time. It's because, just necessary. Because it's just necessary. Because when you play four deep zone, well, then that guy's zone ends at about partway between where the R and the S are in the end zone there. And then he doesn't follow that guy and to then such he doesn't, an extreme. And then he doesn't follow that guy to such an extreme. And he he's turns still, around right here. He's still capable of covering the corner of the end zone. And yes, it makes for a little bit of soft coverage against short passes, and it's you know like a little easier for the AI to run against me too. But I'd rather that than give up big plays like what this could have been. Yeah, and really dumb big plays to boot. Yeah, big because, plays that shouldn't have happened. Because this particular play with this particular coverage could have happened anywhere on the field. And if it happens at their 30-yard line, Suddenly, that's a 70-yard touchdown pass for no reason. That's right. right. Yeah, that it is. That it is. <clears throat> well, those are our top five unwritten rules of Madden NFL 2005. That's right. Comply with these rules or regret it. Thanks for watching.